Hi, it's Chef Rick. What and on earth are you doing? Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making Italian wedding soup. First thing we're going to do is get the biggest pan that you've got on a medium heat. Uh, we're going to make a stock, really, really simple stock. Bit of a shortcut here by using these uh, these stock pots. I think these are really good, and one of them makes half a liter. So obviously two there with with a liter, of course. In total, this recipe is about four liters of uh, of stock. So you can see, just put those in, give them a stir around. Don't worry if they don't fully dissolve or anything, because obviously this is going to be a, a boiling soup, so they will break down uh, as you do it. Just pour those into your pan nice and carefully. Obviously that's the last litre going in. You can see there, that was pretty much just like some boiling water with the two pots in it, two jelly pots. But now as we start to mix it and let it cook down, it's all going to go absolutely beautiful. So that's the, the most simple way you can start with a very, very base stock. Get the heat up a little bit on that. Now we're going to add some veg to it. So a carrot, peeling a carrot, really easy. Long length all the way up and down. And we're just going to top and tail it as well. So we're just going to chop off the bottom, chop off the top. Just chop it into big chunks. Some celery. Literally just remove the ends. Again, do a rough chop. You are making a stock here, so you could just kind of throw all of the veg in, but I like to keep it this way. Just keep, and you end up with a bit of a cleaner, cleaner soup at the end. Onions, just normal brown onions. Don't forget, that's the root bit there, so we're going to keep that intact. And if that stays intact, you're not going to cry. It's only when, you sort of, when you've chopped that bit off there that you're going to have tears. So keep that bit to, uh, all together. Chop off the end. And we're just going to quarter these. So again, run down through that root, keep it on there. Peel off the outer layer. And there you go. Chop those again, so they're just in quarters. And again, because you haven't removed that root, there'll be no tears or anything whilst you're doing that. Put those in with the other veg. A couple of bay leaves, some parsley, just a small handful of parsley. And now carefully, add this to the, uh, the stock that's been cooking down, probably well, it's been cooking down for the time I've been chopping those veg, so for about 10 minutes. Carefully add those in. Give it a stir. And just turn the heat down slightly and let that sit there. In the meantime, we're going to make some of the meatballs that go in this soup. So, the first thing we'll do is take some garlic cloves. And whenever we're taking or peeling garlic, just take off the top and the bottom. And that's your garlic clove. Let's get four of those. Uh, smush them with the back of a knife, so put a knife down and carefully just press down. See that breaks it apart. And then we're just gonna chop those up really, really small. Remember, whenever we're chopping anything, it's just about taking your time with it, just going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Keep bringing it back to the middle. When you're running your finger down the knife like that, remove, push like towards the blade. So you're not going to cut yourself. That's the garlic. Some more parsley, just a handful of parsley. Again, same with anything. Start with rough chops. And just take your time with it. Just keep it on there. Keep on bringing it back to the middle, chopping it, chopping it, chopping it. Some Parmesan cheese. Which is going to grate for you. Smallest grate that you can on these because obviously it's going into the meatballs. So you're going to grate all of that Parmesan cheese. As I've said already, all the quantities are down in the uh, description. And that's it and some ground pork and some ground beef. Don't forget, whenever we're doing anything, we always use pork and beef uh, when making meatballs or anything to do with kind of Italian cookery, just so it's lovely and soft. 
to get everything in there that's dried breadcrumbs. Just shop bought dried breadcrumbs. It's like the cheap ones. Give that a really good mix round. Just forgot salt and pepper. So nice amount of salt. And a few good turns of pepper, black pepper. Now we're gonna really mix all of this together to make meatballs. Uh, this soup, by the way, wedding soup, it's nothing to do with weddings at all. Uh, it's, it's, it's a translation from the word marriage in Italian. So it's a combination of, it's, it's the marriage of the different ingredients coming together. So we're gonna take a baking tray, line it with some greaseproof paper. And now just gonna put a little bit of olive oil on our hands so the meatballs don't stick. And just form these together into meatballs. You want them quite compact, quite quite tight, because uh, we're gonna brown them off and then we're gonna, they're gonna be sat within that soup. So they're gonna be so lovely, so lovely soft and moist and everything, but you don't want them to, uh, to, be, to be too loose and breaking apart. So you form your meatballs. You can see those ones, what are they the size like? You can see how big they are. About the size of a table tennis ball. So we're going to get a pan on with some oil, olive oil. And we're just going to add our meatballs to it because we just want to brown the edges of them all now. Or brown the outsides if you like. So I'll do them in batches. You can see there they're starting to, uh, to catch. If whenever you're putting things in a pan, be it meatballs or if you remember from one of the scallop videos, put things in like clockwise order and then you know the order you put them in. So then, you know, turn the 12 o'clock, turn the one o'clock, turn the two o'clock and they'll all get a nice even coating. But you can see, and these are going to cook in the soup as well, like some people wouldn't, um, would just put them straight in, but you see I've browned them first before they go into that soup. So that's the meatballs. They've just been cooked on the outside. They've got a bit of a, uh, a sear on the outside. They're not cooked all the way through. That's going to happen when we put them into the uh, into the broth. Now we're going to strain off the broth. So make sure, number one rule, put a pan first in the sink, then your colander, and then pour everything out through that colander. Uh, I have a glamorous assistant come and help me here just because I was struggling with, with everything. So if you've got someone who can hold that for you, if not, just do it in two bits. Just going to strain off those veg. You can keep those. Um, you can use them in pies, pasties. I'll put a link to another video where we, where we do that. Big pan back on the stove again. That boiling hot broth into the pan. Into the broth go the meatballs. Carefully. I'm being a little bit reckless. Here. Give those a good stir around. And you can let those sit now, cooking that broth as long as you like, a couple of hours. I, I, I'd give them, give them at least half an hour, but you know, put it on nice low heat, leave it for a couple of hours. Now we're gonna make something very, very special. So we're gonna start with some fresh bread. We're gonna make breadcrumbs. This was just the end of a, a piece of sourdough. I can't remember what I weighed on there, but I'll, um, again, once it's all down in the description. Just gonna tear up that bread. And that's had about 15 minutes, 20 minutes in a, in, a, in a hot oven, about 200. Take that out, let it cool down. And then just blitz them up. We're gonna be making, this is a homemade breadcrumb. This breadcrumb needs to be, it needs a, instead of using those dried ones that we used before in a meatball, this one still needs to be a little bit soft. So breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, eggs, Give this a really good mix around. This is going to make almost a like soft, doughy, croutony, um, like, like dumplingy bits that, that go throughout the soup and just give every mouth a flavour. It's absolutely amazing. So you make that, give that a good mix round. Uh, again, the soup's now been cooking away in a nice low heat, covered lid. Those meatballs are all absolutely perfect. This is, a, like I say, about a couple of hours later. Those meatballs out just to show you, you can kind of see that it's uh, it's totally cooked all the way through. Nice little seal on the outside. 
And now into the soup goes our cheesy soft bread mixture. Give that a really, really good mix round. Some bits will stay together in nice, beautiful, soft like clumps. Some kind of mix around within the soup. The smell that comes off it at this point is absolutely amazing. Lid back on. Again, you leave that for at least 15 minutes. I left this for about just over half an hour. Come back to it. And we're pretty much ready to serve. I've not said this already about 10 times in this video, this smells absolutely incredible. It's probably the best smelling soup absolutely out there. And to be honest, it's basically just like a, a chicken soup with, with meatballs in there. And obviously you've got those lovely, soft, bready, um, cheesy kind of bits running throughout it. Uh, get yourself a really, really nice hot bowl. Get it looking pretty. Make sure you give three of those meatballs out there. This is, uh, you get some fresh parsley on top as well. You know, it's, it's it's, it's, it's rich, it's delicate, the meatballs are soft, it's cheesy, it goes down far, far, far too quick, don't last very long, lots of parmesan on top there by the way, uh, you don't forget you got a lovely hot bowl, a lovely hot soup with hot meatballs, so take, take your time dressing it because it can be a very, very good looking um, thing as well, extra virgin olive oil over the top and serve, and that is Italian wedding soup in my opinion, well, said it, once said it a thousand times, one of the best soups in the world, um, again I don't try it at the end, my dad always says, why, why do you not eat the, uh, why can't we see you eat some, try some at the end. Um, so I'm going to do that in some future videos, make sure that I do a little bit more of that. And uh, I'll be putting plenty more videos out there soon. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate, appreciate every single viewer and um, I'll see you on the next one.